One of the most calamitous events in space exploration history is that of the Challenger in 1986. The moment that the entire world watches as the first teacher was sent to space, only to have the shuttle go up in flames just over a minute later. I have a video out on that as well in case you're interested. If the Challenger is the most calamitous, then the Columbia disaster is a close second. Because this disaster too is one that could have been avoided. After the Columbia's mission has been postponed for about two years, on January 16, 2003, Columbia was green for liftoff. It took a full 81 seconds before Columbia's disaster struck, as opposed to the Challenger's 73. And while Challenger's O-ring disaster turned into a fiery explosion, the Columbia's was more of a silent killer. A two feet piece of foam from the external fuel tank, the orange part in between the two solid rocket boosters, fell off and damaged the heat resistant tiles of the shuttle's left wing. The left wing, as well as the nose itself, are covered with reinforced tiles as these areas take the biggest blow from the re entry heat. This drop went unnoticed until after a review of the launch the very next day, but it was far from special. Foam impacts are relatively normal during rocket launches, and the hit was thought to have caused negligible damage to the wing. The earlier Atlantis launch had sustained considerable damage due to foam falloff, but the impact of this damage on re-entry was low, due to it not harming the vital parts for re-entry, the nose and the wings. Imaging requests from the American Department of Defense were issued by three different departments of NASA all of which were blocked by a NASA official believing that the imaging requests were not required. The only possible method left to gouge the damage were simulations. The conclusion of these simulations was that some damage will be sustained upon re-entry of the shuttle, but not terminally so. The commander Robert Gibson knew damage to the wing could be dangerous despite Flight Ops choice to ignore it. If upon re-entry the orbiter was showing signs of disintegration, he told them to, quote, tell Mission Control what I thought of their analysis, end quote. The final statement of an amazing man. On February 1st, 2003, after some apparent flashes, the Columbia's left wing went offline and started to spin out of control. The Columbia fell apart above East Texas, shattering its debris over a wide area. Seven astronauts, who have been vigilantly working for the sake of science, had lost their lives that day. One of their experiments, a petri dish studying the effects of zero gravity on the physiology of worms, was extracted from the wreckage. A consensus was drawn after a thorough investigation that this calamity could have been prevented if the imagery was requested or the crew was informed in time to engage a spacewalk to confirm the damages. If the damages were confirmed, then the re-entry could have been postponed or cancelled altogether, and the crew could have joined the spacecraft Atlantis, which was already planned for launch. Just like higher-ups at NASA ignored advice to test the O-rings of the Challenger under more extreme weather conditions, so too did they ignore the urgent request for imagery to assess the damage of the Columbia. Although sometimes efficient choices have to be made, Safety should always be the number one priority. While it is difficult to say whether any decision is right or wrong, when it involves body counts, the answer should be clear.